Hey Nuggets, welcome to the Food Truck. My name is Ruka, and today we are doing another episode of Disco Elysium, episode number four. A uh, little recap before we get started. Uh, last time, we found out quite a bit of information about ourselves, our history, our cases solved. Apparently, we used to be a really, really good cop, and now, as you can see, we're kind of washed up. So, uh, not sure exactly how we got to this point, but uh, I do have a few guesses concerning maybe exes and whatnot. And probably that drove us to a drunken depression, but who knows, we're going to find that out sooner or later, maybe. Uh, also, we met a very, very nice uh, lady who helped us fill in quite a bit of information about the world and also what's going on with the strikes and nothing about the lynching yet until we get our badge, but eventually we'll get there. So we got to find our badge first, wherever the heck that is. So there's a very, very big man and we just cannot get through. And uh, yeah... I think the only way we can get through him is probably converting to whatever ideology he's got, but I really, really don't want to do that, if at all possible. So we are going to leave that as a last resort if we absolutely have to. So now we're kind of stuck uh, looking for a third way, because taking him out physically is definitely not an option. Tried twice, almost succeeded the first time, mostly failed the second time. So I don't think that's going to help us anytime soon. So now we are going to try to figure out another way. I don't think rallying the workers to rush him down is a good idea. At least a very the scab leader isn't going to help us with that. Uh, so we're going to have to infiltrate. The question is, where do we infiltrate? I have an idea, uh, but we have to try to get there first. So there is might be a back door and we have to look for it. So let's get started already. All right, so there's been some uh, kerfuckle that I just noticed when loading the game. Uh, apparently, we still have uh, three health charges as well as four morale charges, which uh, tells me I kind of screwed up something. I forgot to save it after we talked to this guy about his ideology and stuff so I yeah like check this out your race descent has only worsened since I last saw you yeah so we you have really let yourself go so we have another chance to fight him also the what do you call us the um, his lecture on his ideology has not been done yet uh, so yeah, I think I screwed up my save last time. So what we're going to do is give another shot at fighting him. Hopefully, hopefully we can do a little bit better this time. And if it doesn't, then we'll go through the through the uh, theory, his theory, and hopefully that'll be. more than enough we shall see <laughs> and let's go ahead and go through this option so it's going to be the same as the last time all right so uh we're basically caught up again to where we were before i'm just going to re-equip Yes, remove that. Let's uh, let's keep the the naval coat. Conceptualization, physical instrument. Suggestion. Yeah, let's keep that tank top. No one has to see this tank top, though. Um. Yeah, I think that's it. What's this? Lonesome, long way home. Here we go. Ah. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and through the market. Past the Boogie Street Spearhead to the other side of the lake. The frozen eye at the center of the district. Then past the video rental store on the corner. There at the end of a street lined with pine trees. A small house no larger than a matchbox. 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone, and so are those people. 
Why did you come here? Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have now. Alright then. I think we learned this last time, but because of uh, the save issue, we didn't have it on us. So what does that get us? Learning cap or perception race to five, speed gives one sigh. Speed. Alright then. On one hand, I preserve my items that I used up from last time, uh, though unintentional. I don't encourage... <laughs> I don't encourage reloading in this game. I kind of just want to play this straight and, like, whatever happens, happens kind of thing. But... Uh, let's go through a dialogue that I did with him last time also. Right to I need you to be my right champion against John work. Luke. Shame on you! No. I'm not a fighter. I'm a worker. Alright. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Did I pick any did I pick this up? The stuff in no wait, there was there wasn't nothing in there. There was nothing in there. Uh, let's pick this up, may as well. Did I talk to you? Looking for something? Okay, nope. I, th I, I remember picking that first option, but we're not gonna waste any time there. Let's see, am I missing anything else here? Let's check to see if there's anyone in the cafeteria before we go to the back. Because I think the back might have something for us. Okay, there's still no one here. There's nothing to pick up on this side. Can we you go to the door? A heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. A dimple lock. Okay, so there's nothing I can do about that. I see. Alright, we'll just go to the back. We'll just go to the back. I need to remember to say before quitting. Man, darn autosave, I thought, thought that was a thing. Okay, I don't want to talk to Kuno, so let's not talk to Kuno. Let's see. I think we've been here last time, but let's, uh... Wait. What's this? Oh, is that where the door leads to? Okay, I can't get there. Not sure what where these doors are from. Well, it's from here. Well, let's check this out first. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. Perception. Why am I looking at this pile of roofing material? Because there's a secret door mm. behind the panels of Etonite. That's why they're too orderly. Pull the panels aside. There it is. You see a shabby little door. Why are there's a way? Well, it's gonna get us up there, but I don't know if I can get past that. What is this, then? A tool shed? Let's investigate. Better than nothing. Hmm. Let's see what's here. A silver plate with traces of bone yellow powder. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. That's drugs. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. There's a good vague way to ask where he stands on drug use. Professionally, I mean. Someone has taken narcotics here. Perhaps the police should interfere? I wasn't thinking about about taking it, I swear. I was thinking about justice. <laughs> I've heard amphetamines make you a really good detective. Are you a really good detective? All right, I don't think we want to do two or three to suggest uh, police should be doing any drug use, but I guess we should ask to see if we should interfere. I mean, te technically no, because this is not our case, but... Perhaps not. 
This is below our pay grade, detective. However, see that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? The secret path the local kids use. Okay. Worth a shot. I may as well remove... No, I'll keep the plastic bag on me. <laughs> I'll keep it. What's this? A pig. Cured pig's head. It looks mummified. Empty tube of magnesolem. Magnesium so supplement. Okay. Hulk. Poster says get out of the way or get fucked up. Hmm. Oh, cash. Am I going to be taking some kid's cash? Yes. After all the trouble they gave me? Yes. Alright, we're up here. What's this? Well, whatever it is, I can't seem to grab it from here. I have to go all the way up. And... Oh, this is above. No wonder I couldn't get to it. Cash money. What's in here? Yes? No, no, no. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the... The bucket. Grand Quran 37? Postcard. Restoration pillars keep the ruins together. How about this? This doorway is going to collapse soon. It hasn't yet. Hmm. Alright, let's make our way up. There's something here. Ooh, nose effect. Yes, I will need that. Ooh, stuff up here. More cash. More cash! We're up to three again. Very nice. Uh, Kim, wh where did you go? How do we open door, Kim? Okay, Kim, um... How do we get around? We got this far, but how do we... How do we get there? Oh, is there a door here? Hold up. Nope. Nope. That actually goes outside. Show me how to get that, um, that coat. Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. Look, Lieutenant. Someone left his cloak behind. Yes, it's probably yours. <laughs> it bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. Ah, uh, so my badge might be around here somewhere. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in the day. <laughs> Look around. The wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant mm. looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance over the container yard. Then he turns back to the sad piece of fabric flapping in the wind. What exactly are we, gonna, are we doing up here? I was under the assumption we could ask the leader of this union to help us get this body down. This is why we're here, right? Yes. Or it could be that we are just exploring. Uh, I mean, we could also be exploring, but... Do you really think this cloak is mine? Should I go for it? Jump. The cloak? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it... He looks over the ledge at the cold pavement below. Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. Two meter stops. Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind <laughs> you. The cloak looks like a bag of goodies floating in the wind. Who knows what its pockets may hide? Ah, uh, savoir faire. Uh, my savoir faire is very low. Maybe we should. Yeah, not right now. Hold up. Maybe my savoir faire is really low. Let's increase our savoir faire by removing our shoes and pants. <laughs> no one has to see what's underneath, so that's okay. Bum hat, let's reuse that. Can't believe I'm doing min maxing or. Oh my gosh, no! Okay. A tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. No one has claimed it for their own. It's still not great, but it's better than before. Let's go for it. Oh! No pants! 
<laughs> As you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. Close your eyes. Let your senses take in the world around you. No. Continue the voyage through the salty air. <laughs> As the concrete floor welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive. Alert. Capable. Must be the adrenaline. I knew you could do it. My climbing down might not have been as disco as your jump, but at <laughs> least we can explore the harbor now. With your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes back in. Okay, let's put some pants back on because it's disturbing. Pants! Um, so let's go with the, for the coat. Shoes. I'm kind of surprised that having no shoes helps. I wouldn't have guessed, to be honest. Let's see. I guess I'll keep the the tank top underneath. We don't need that much conceptualization. Get my coat back. Esprit the corpse and shivers. What is shivers? Oh, I think that's like a sixth sense, right? Tune into the city. That's probably a sixth sense. Let's go ahead and. Let's go ahead and put that on. It sounds really nice right now. Except we look like a hobo, so let's put on a shirt. <laughs> Badass blazer, disco ass blazer. Ah, uh, suggestion has tanked them. Maybe I'll keep the white tank top. I, I need a little bit of extra suggestion. Speaking of, maybe we should up, up, yeah, level up this. Mm. I'll save the point in case I need to do, like, improve my chances on something. But hey, we got it. Collecting rainwater. We're back here now. Let's go and pick some stuff up while we can. Bottles. Take it. Take bottle. And this bottle. And this bottle. Yes? No, 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 no. I need bottles. Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and potent Pilsner. At least three packs worth of cigarette butts. I need this other battle bottle. Yep, that one. What's over here? This is the Night Watchman's booth. The name on the door reads... Rene Arno. Rene. Is this is this the old guy? Listen, it's okay to take a few minutes to yourself. Sit down and have a breather. You need <clears throat> to rest. Your body is aching. Getting in here has taken something out of you. Have a seat. So this is where Ren where Rene works. I'm going to look around. If you must. But please hurry. We are pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Take the picture. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, Rene, is dressed in a Royal Carabinet uniform. The girl is young and very pretty. She is smiling playfully at the camera. We better give this to Rene uh, next chance we get because I don't think taking the picture would be good. Why did you take that picture of Rene? I'm gonna ask him about it. You're really interested in that old soldier. Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure, as long as it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. Okay, let's uh, rest a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't take too much time. The chair is not as austere as the rest of the booth. A thin gray pillow is attached to the seat, secured to the stiles by black ribbons. Breathe deep. Search for a little something something to help you out. Let's see. Breathe deep. Stale air floods through your nostrils. Not a single mote of dust floats inside your lungs, though. The inside of the booth is immaculate. Search for a little something something to help you out. The drawers are empty, save for old timesheets and receipts. One small box, however, does hold some cheap painkillers. They are slightly out of date. Kim, would you mind if I help myself to some meds? Take the painkillers. Read the side effects. Oh boy, where to start? 
elevated risk of dementia, mini strokes, Prophet's disease, sudden death, hair death, erectile malfunction, <laughs> critical flatulence, watery blood, black mucus, uncontrollable weeping, increased sensitivity to La Opera, inoperable joint disorder, total spinal collapse. <sighs> Don't think about that. Quick, think about something else. I'm a cop. I have cop things to do. Murders to solve. People to help. Kim's counting on me. Disco, mirror balls, kick ass moves, boogie beat. <laughs> I hope I'm not fucking Renee over by taking his painkillers. Pain they I'd leave those alone. I don't see what the big deal is. This sounds pretty normal to me. I am scared. I will never be held or loved in this world again. Uh I am scared. I will never be held or loved in this world again. Maybe this was a bad idea. Get up. You okay. stand and exit the booth. I was hoping to get a little bit of a HP recovery from that, but that didn't happen. Let's see. Ask Renee about the photo. Can we see photo? Okay. Photo of a happy couple. I guess I can't go down from here. The stairs look out of out of order. How about this? Wild pines. Wait, 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 hold up. All around you, great machines in quiescence. Quiescence, I think. Wild white pine trees are printed onto the screen covering. Looks like a forest under snow. <clears throat> well, we make it we made it past. What's this? Oh, there is a button. There is this thing. What's this button do? A rusting control panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Mush and Aret are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Mush. On. Aret. Off. Let's leave that for now. Um, I don't want this thing above me to hit me. Let's figure out a way to get that out first. You see faded industrial lettering on the platform. Kvalsund? Kvalsund? What's this? Money. What's this thing? Nose effect. Okay, so... I guess we're clear? How does the autosave work? I need to check this out. Uh, auto save. Auto save. Auto save. Auto save. I guess auto save just does whatever auto save will do. All right. Press the button. Let's turn it on. What's the worst thing that happen? Marsh. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Didn't go very far. Ah, it's dropping it though. Oh, is this how we get across? We can also check what's in that thing, maybe? Seems a little precarious though. Well, continue. And with a surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. The harbor sleeps as the strike rages in the distance. The crane can rest again, now that its purpose has been fulfilled. Its purpose? What do you mean? Moving this container, of course. For this purpose, it was built. For this purpose, it has acted. And now, it will rest. Understood. I can't see how that was worth the records. <laughs> except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. Okay, let's turn it off. The crane does not return to its original position. It does not move at all. Well, maybe we can open the the thing and see what's in it. Got my crowbar. I think it's crowbar time. Crowbar, also the chain cutters. 
Clefson means well for fjord in Arden, I see. Before you stands a cargo container. Just one of many in the yard. Lieutenant, I think there's something special about this container. You do? Because I don't. What? Why not? There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating <laughs> on this one? It was hanging from the crane. I don't know, Kim. It just feels special. Maybe there's some contraband in here. You're right, it's probably nothing. Maybe there's contraband. There may very well be, but we are not here to look for that. True. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to get the body down from the tree. True. Alright. You make a very good point, Kim. I'm going to put those away. Got my plastic bag again, just in case we got something. Wait, what's this? The shipyard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. Ooh, money! Let's take it. What's this? This speaker tower is silent. There is no work to organize in the yard below. The musk of oil and rust comes from the chasm in front of you. It smells like blood. I can't open this. Is it time for... a little bar? Yes, it is. Got some gloves. Nice. Bound Ultra Series gloves. Hey, isn't this, is, doesn't, isn't this what he has in the... in the cover? Well, wow. okay then. There is a lot of money up here. Industrialized size thermos smells like burnt coffee. More cash. We're getting rich. We're gonna, <laughs> we almost have 10 real. Ah, container, container, container. Oh, there's someone here. The banner sags under the weight of rain and snow. White waves on red. Who are you? Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. <laughs> the lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. Mm. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisunt on Moindi. Container, container, used to be wild pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. <laughs> the tiny man is so engaged in his work he doesn't notice you. Uh, hi. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? A shadow passes over his kind face. Uh, what is with you and people and scabs? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Okay. You're Ubi, right? What are you doing with the containers? Where is everyone? The harbor is empty. Do you work here? What's in that container over there? I'm looking for the leader of the union. Let's see... What are you doing with the containers? I'm kind of curious. Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. He waves at the containers towering behind him. What's going on here? Looks at the mountains of containers rising behind him. Uh, let's see. Let's check. The containers in the yard are green in Wild Pines livery, and the mountains rising behind Leo is all red in Union colors. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard's core. This looks like a massive redecorating operation, Kim. Leo, has anyone told you why you need to change the covers? Uh, thanks, Leo. You've been very helpful. Let's see. Redecorating. Yes, they are hiding it from the inside. All the red containers have the Debarders Union logo on them. Uh, has anyone told you why you need to change the covers? No, not really. Miss Everett doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. <laughs> you would. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. You've been very helpful. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. 
Uh, where is everyone? The harbor is empty. I know they're in strike, but... Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. He leans in with a confidential look. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. Wow, how do you do, what do you do with money? So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. He pauses to think. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation. For a week or so. He stops, but seems eager to tell you more. What kind of trouble did this Titus and friends get into? Got it, but there were other things I need to discuss. Uh, yeah, let's ask about Titus and his friends. Well, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union <coughs> business. He le smiles and leans closer. Him and his boy stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling him to take some time off. But what did they actually do? Really? Did they kill someone? I have another question. Did they kill someone? Let's just be upfront. No, I don't think they killed anyone. Let's better talk about something else. Titus and his boys do good work. I don't want to get them in trouble over a little drinking. Okay. Do you work here? Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard <laughs> Bellet. But everyone calls me Leo. The little man raises his hand in a welcoming gesture. I'm like Mr. Everett's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town, and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Everett is away. <laughs> okay. Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Who is this Miss Beaufort? The lieutenant looks up at Leo. A real pretty lady with a skin like those Douai Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down besides the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. Hold on, who's this Miss Buford you mentioned? I think you're doing a great job here, Leo. I'm pretty sure this place would totally fall apart if it didn't shine. The bossman's shoes, Leo. Who's Miss Beaufort? Oh, Lizzie. She is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. I see. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Dr. Lemaitre said so, and she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. He sighs and falls silent, watching you meekly with his blue, blue eyes. So Everett trained a lawyer <laughs> named Miss Beefoot. Interesting. I think you're doing a great job here, Leo. Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. The lieutenant smiles at the little man. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. You didn't think it was possible, but the smile becomes even wider. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. So what's in the container over there? Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. I'm looking for the leader of the Union Dock Workers. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've <laughs> lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. He coughs and continues immediately. Guys like Mr. Everett and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made marginalized what it is today. Mr. Everett and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Did you now? Easy now, Leo. I just want to know where I can find this man. Oh, Mr. Evra is where he always is. In his office, of course. He points to the two joint containers to your right. Okay, I'm off. Or, I don't know. The Ubi thing is curious, but not really pertinent right now. I'm, I'm off. Bye-bye now. Nice fellow. I wonder if you saw my crowbar. Okay, I guess we're getting going in here. He must be in here. The 
coffee in the giant thermoses are still it still look warm. Oh, there he is, big guy. A stair of pallets uh, leading up. Hard work, huh? A taxidermy fish that tells time. All right, here you are. We gotta talk to you. Before you is a wall oh, wow. of a man seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. Really now? With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. Are he you simply stares at you. Are you in charge of the dock workers? Let's get straight to business. There is a dead body in a tree. Let's start with the top. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. You know us. You also know my last name. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. The man relaxes into his chair and continues. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? I understand well. He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead, detective. The lieutenant nods at you, then the chair. He knows what we're up to. How does he know Kim? But now we have a, we have a name, we're Dubar, at least that's our last name. What's our first name? Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. All right, Esprit, do your best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Let's see, why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. All right. Uh, I don't sit. It's kind of my thing. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. As he nods, his multiple chins move like ocean waves. Oh, my. I, too, have convictions, one of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. This is not eye level? Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. He turns back to his typewriter. You're no titan of volition, buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. All right, we're taking a sit then. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men, reasonable men can be of great use to one another. Uh, remain serious. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? Ooh, my health? What? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair <laughs> in the world. It's violating your backside. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh, uh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. How do you know everything? Also, why did this chair... No, I know why the chair took... did some damage to me, but... Holy crap, I didn't think I'd be taking damage from a chair. <laughs> this should take care of that nonsense. <laughs> he points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Uh, should I refuse? Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. I, I need more. I need 100 real. Wait, you know Gart? Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. Kind of, yeah. With a grin, he points to the checker game. <laughs> it's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. Let's see. Thank you, Evart. Uh, take the comically large check. Take the comically large check, but don't say anything. Keep it. I'm good. How do I ask this guy for more money? You can take the comically large check and shove it up your ass. Let's see. Leave it. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I want to owe him anything. Keep it. I'm good. 
Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. He crosses his arms on his ample midsection and sinks further into his chair. We were kind of warned not to be indebted to him at all, so let's not take it. Also, 25 is not enough to cover our bill. If it was 100, I would be more receptive to it. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. How do you know about my gun? Do you know anything about my badge, then? His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. Morale crit. Oh, the world geez. is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. We're taking a lot of damage just talking to this guy. When he said, don't worry, he actually meant, be very worried. How do you know about my lost gun? Oh, I wish I could say that. I'm not worried, I got this. Uh, do I ask about how he knows about my lost gun? I'm not worried. I got this. Yeah, let's just go with number two. It seems the most neutral. Are you all right, Harry? You say you got this, but you seem a little anxious to me. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. How much do I have to... How much do I need to trust this guy? Also, we got a full name now. Harry Du Boy. Understood. We are Harry. This guy is telling us everything we need, we need to know. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. The chair is killing you. Side effects, spooks. Composure. Uh, Kim? A uh, Kim? Officer. We will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Ah, uh, jeez, I can't skip the composure roll, can I? All right, I guess we'll just go for it. Who does this guy what? think you are? Ronnie the Rookie? <laughs> you ain't worried about no lost gun or unpaid bill or forgotten name. You're the bad cop. <laughs> You're probably more corrupt than him. Oh my gosh, I did not expect that to work. Oh my. Wait, that's it? That's a point. That's a, my point of pride here. Sink deep into the folding chair. Smile and cross your hands behind your back. All right. Yeah, let's go for it. The fat man does the same, <laughs> sinking deeper into his chair than one would think is physically possible. He seems to be enjoying your little display. I guess I'll be a bad cop for a little bit. Good. Now lean in with some corruption. Listen, Evart. Pal, we both know what makes the wheels of the world turn. That we do, Harry. Let them say what they will about you and me. We're both born fighters. <laughs> this fighter could have used a more comfortable chair. Nice bit with a chair, by the way. <laughs> a good way to keep your guests on edge. Why, thank you. It's always nice when a fellow professional appreciates your work. That's it. Now kick back and add a final flourish <laughs> for dignity. Thanks for your hospitality. Feel free to visit me down the station anytime. This is a worm's lair and we both know why I'm here. To help grow your horn. I'm not saying I'm corrupt, I'm rational. Uh, thanks for your hospitality. Feel free to visit me down the station anytime. You strike me as a reasonable man, Harry. I like that in a law man. <laughs> Let's cut to the chase, shall we? What can Everard Clare do for you? I think we'd like to ask you a few questions. Don't you think so, Detective? The lieutenant looks quite fed up with the situation. I'm sorry. Somehow you managed to get yourself out of this one. Now quick, keep the momentum up. Ask questions. Aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Harry, honestly, <laughs> I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age... 
You too. A uh, man my age, what are you implying? I'm at the peak of my abilities. I am... I too am surprised by the resilience and athleticism of this tool I've been provided with through your chest. My body's gonna break down any moment now, probably push it to the limit. Enough wackiness, let's get back to business. I'm at the peak of my abilities. Man my age, peak of my abilities. Hmm. <laughs> you did look like you were gonna collapse and die when I told you about your lost gam. <laughs> anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. You called me Mr. Du Bois, why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. That's what the Hang of the Corpse called you. Harry. So that's really my name? My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are <laughs> a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? He shrugs with an amazed expression. I think the odds of that are very low. It's true, my memory is a bit hazy. My memory is fine, I'm just testing you. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out. With my big fat folder. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. I don't want to trust this guy. But then again, I, I guess it, he doesn't, he's not the one who has a beef with me. But then again, he's essentially a mob boss. I don't want to trust him. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? The lieutenant inspects over uh, Everard over his spectacles. Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. Let me get this straight. My full... Uh, what is my full name? I don't... I think I know what my full name is. Do you know anything about my family? Do I have... What kids or wife? What kind of cop does it say I am? Where'd you get that folder? Have another look at that folder. Let's get this straight. What is my full name? It's Harry. Harry Dubois. Okay, I like it. I can work with that. I don't... I don't really like it. Okay, I like it. I can work with that. And I can work with you, Harry. Now, what else can I do for you? Do you know anything about my family? Do I have wife or kids? Or... Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? You're right, I don't. I think I do. I'd be a wonderful father. Never mind the family. <laughs> with a drinking? Uh, you're right, I don't. That's why I like you, Harry. <laughs> a good man knows both his strengths and his weaknesses, and you, my friend, you are one of the all-time greats. Oh my gosh. What kind of cop does it say I am? Oh, Harry. You are the most regular, traditional, by-the-book law official imaginable. Until the drinking. Yeah. I just wanted to do my job, that's all. Hey, I'm not that regular. Check, check out my tie. <laughs> check out my tie. Now that is funky, Harry. You are a colorful fellow. Not a boring stiff like this deceitful folder here implies. <laughs> He's probably just making a guess based on your recent activity in Martinez. Where'd you get that folder? Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. Why? He closes the folder. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. I guess we'll go ahead and ask for the folder now. As you look at the folder, Everard covers it with his hand <laughs> and pets it. Is he trying to hide that it's not a real RCM folder? It certainly doesn't have the RCM stamp on it. That's not an RCM folder. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. <laughs> Just like this right now. He got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? That means he doesn't really know anything about you. Good. A pity. The mystery of you 
will have to remain a mystery for the time being. So the Census Bureau says my name is Harry Du Bois. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. Okay, could you help me get a dead body down from a tree? You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my! Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt. A steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. Yeah, the belt thing. Say nothing. You're a community leader. Help your community out. <laughs> uh, yeah, the belt thing. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. He licks his fat lips and smiles. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. He picks up the handset uh, of a radio phone to his right, then clicks a button. Jean-Luc, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. Okay, well, that solves that. And Jean, please take it easy with the race science. That's a yes to getting the body down, no to the race science. He hangs up and turns back to you. You can find Jean-Luc down at the gates. He's the big impressive one. You know, tattoos, muscles, ethnic looking. Can't miss him. Great guy. Yeah, until he gets it on, on his uh, race theory. Let's talk about my lost gun. Yes, your lost gun. <laughs> my best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. He winks at you. Okay, how about my badge? Where's my badge? The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Possibly. Hold on, could he really hold my gun hostage? I will not be blackmailed with this gun business. I don't care about my gun, keep it. Does mean if I do things for you, I will get my gun back. Could he hold my gun hostage? Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. I don't care about my gun, keep it. No, I don't want him to keep it. I will not be blackmailed with this gun business. Mm. We may have some use for him. We may have some use for him. But I don't want to work for him either. I will not be blackmailed. Harry, Harry! I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. Yeah, I, I know a pair of kunos that would definitely want to have their hands on it. I assure you we are working on locating <laughs> the missing sidearm as well. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun-finding competition on our hands. I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to help you like I'm helping you with the body and your lost gun. I mean, it's no <sighs> secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand... You need to interview me. Since there's a but. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Okay. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. The lieutenant says with a slow nod. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. I've opened a few doors in my life. You've heard wrong, Evart. We're not. Tim, is this true? Are we door-opening machines? I've opened a few doors in my life. You've heard wrong, Evart. We're not. Oh, you're being too modest, my friend. But don't worry. This annoying thing I have is completely legal. 
I just need you to open a door. Is this really legal? An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. You could win the trust of the arch liar, pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. That's the plan, but what do we have? Why don't you just open it yourself? Whose door is it? I bet you don't even know anything about the hanging. Damn it, fine, I look into it. We need to talk about that murder, accept the task. Refuse the task, I can't accept this thing right now. Why don't you open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary <laughs> physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. Well, I'm not talking about you personally, but you know, you, you got people to do it for you. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. I see he's looking for the rat. What do you mean by a weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. He removes his glasses and rubs his nose. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. I bet you don't even know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Probably. Okay, I can't accept this thing, refuse the task. For now. Of course, Harry, I understand. But if that's the case, I don't think we'll ever find your gun. Even worse, we won't be able to speak like equals about the murder. Ugh, that's gonna be bad, huh? Perhaps this was just bad timing for you. Know that you can always come back to me. I really hope you do. For your sake, my sake, and for your gun's sake too. Yes, we both understand what you meant. This may be the only way, he thinks. I won't hold it against you. In fact, we probably should reconsider later. Yeah. I'm reconsidering opening that door you asked me to open. Perhaps it will help me somehow. Okay, maybe not yet. I met Joyce, the company representative. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. He adjusts the button on his sleeve. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Just pals? We're all trying to do what's best for Martinez here. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I'm helping you get that nasty body down from the tree. And with finding your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. What happened to the previous negotiator, Mr. Gaumont? Joyce said the previous union leader vanished under suspicious uh, circumstances. Evart, Joyce seems to think the union is lowballing her. Why haven't you let her see you in person? Let her in to see you. Uh, let's see. What happened to the previous negotiator? What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. He called him a midget. Harry! I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. On one hand, he's being very cordial. On the other hand, I don't think I want to get him on his, on his bad side too much even though he is trying to trap us uh, with some things. It's hard to say if he really lost his temper or if this is another one of his tricks. This man almost never angers visibly. Uh, Joyce said the previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? better go home and check. The election can wait. When the, she got back, the whole thing was over. The man frowns disapprovingly. Yeah, that's definitely a cover-up. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Funny, Joyce didn't mention any casserole. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. 
Maybe it was a rabbit stew, or a hairdryer, or an iron. The point is, her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. Okay, well then. Uh, let's see. Why haven't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. Alright, well, let's talk about something else. Uh, let's go probe for number three. Yes, yes. Low balling, <coughs> of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. Good to know. Okay, let's talk about something else. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. I was going to do that anyway, but it's definitely hiding something. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. This is weird. Not nice weird, but okay. Okay then, uh, let's see. Let's not ask about the container, that might get on his bad side. Evar, I'm going to leave now, but we might talk again later. Wait, you need this to get in and out through the gate. Um, thanks. I was wondering how I'm supposed to get out. Great, when when it gets stuck in here. Here, you're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Okay, well, I wasn't expecting to get a union card. I was expecting for my badge. Okay, get the body down. Talk to Measurehead. Ask him to get the body down. <laughs> What's map? Map information. Oh, this is the stuff that we already done, right? Oh, oh wait, I think this um marks it on the map. Not exactly sure what this does. Okay, well we'll look at that another time. But however, we have quite a few things done already. Okay. Let's go find that measure head and see if there's anything else here. Nothing. Alright. It's measure head time. Maybe take down the the crowbar and back to the bag. Guess we're done here. That was interesting. Oh, it's raining now. That was interesting, gotta say. He's quite the character. Um, I don't dislike him. However, I am very wary of him. And I'm trying not to get into his bad side, but I figured I kind of pushed some buttons with him, that's for sure. What is this door? What is this? An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. Huh. So that's where the phone is. The radio is emitting strange buzzing sounds. What's this? Book La Fume, uh, Volume 1, Number 4. What the heck is this? The leading intellectual organ of Martinez communism, I see, offers a radical Mazovian perspective on a range of contemporary issues. The cover features a stylized portrait of the late King Frizzle, with a pair of white antlers growing out of his head. 
For the front of this quarterly journal features a large satirical <laughs> portrait of the late King Friso. From the sides of his head, a pair of white antlers spread to the corners of the cover. Why antlers? Because white antlers are one of the symbols of communism. They represent a society in accord with the natural world and at the same time above it. Why Frizzle? Because Friso was incompetent, foolish, and cruel. In short, the embodiment of everything the communards wished to overthrow. It's satire, you see. I get it. Flip through the pages, see what catches your eye. To your disappointment, there aren't any full color pictures to direct your attention. Just column after column of closely set text, interrupted occasionally by little doodles in black and white. After rifling the pages with your thumb several times, you return to the table of contents. The magazine is divided into several sections. International developments, Kunst und Kultur, and local concerns. Just inside the cover, there's also an editor's note. Read the editor's note. Comrade, as you know, this journal takes its name from Mazov's immortal expression, Du Cristal a la Fume. This was his way of describing the way the rigid, crystalline structures of capitalist ideology turn to smoke under communism. But like the structures of capitalist ideology, we too are at risk of going a la fume. Unlike many publications which are content to spoon feed their readers reassuring drivel, la fume is committed to telling the radical truth, even when that truth may drive away potential subscribers. Only four issues in, and it sounds like they've already alienated their readership. So please, if you value our radical Mazovian perspective on contemporary politics, culture, and international affairs, please consider subscribing today. Yours in struggle, the editors. Play it cool, pretend everything is in order. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. Let's see, I want to catch up on international developments. Content culture, what is that? It takes a moment, but gradually it dawns on you that Kunst und Kultur must mean arts and culture. Okay, I wasn't sure about the first word, but the second one was obviously culture. Why they decided to title this one section in Valda is beyond you. As you leaf through this section, you come across several reviews of recent radio plays, as well as a brief artist spotlight featuring a local artist identified only as C.S. I think I know who C.S. is. That's Cindy the Skull. The main feature, though, is a long essay titled Tip Top Tourne, A Critical Mazovian Perspective. Read the profile C.S.? Just a moment. What is a Tip Top Tourne? Sounds dull. Let's, uh, confirm that C.S. is Cindy. This so-called artist spotlight is really just a brief Q&A made all the briefer by the subject's evident hostility to her interviewer. What's Tip Top Tune? The actual article is surprisingly light on details, but after skimming a page or two, you gather that it has something to do with motor carriage racing. <laughs> if you don't follow it, you only ever hear about the ludicrous sponsorships and obscene death toll. Uh, let's come back to this later. It is 7.06. You flip back you to get the, the front body of down. the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. All right, put the magazine away for now. We'll come back to it later. It's interesting. Anything else here? Someone left the coffee machine on. A standard office file cabinet. The drawer seems to be locked. What's this? On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork laying around like this. Let's open the drawer. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Browse the folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world, from Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara. And the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. 
Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Mm, volition, though. Let's uh, try another time. The drawer slides shut smoothly. It is getting a little late. Uh, let's see. They hard in. Postcard. Okay. There's a Dewey typewriter. The model name is on the back. Every worker, member of the board, written on top of the flyer. At the bottom, the union logo, demand democracy. Okay. What's this in the bathroom? Oh, magnesium. Let's take that. And here? Glasses. Minus one drama, but plus one visual uh, calculus. Let's see. How how do we look with, with it? Nice picture. <laughs> oh man, now that's uh now that's groovy. Visual calculus up uh drama down by one. I don't think we need to do that quite yet, so we're gonna take off the glasses for now. Let's see, um only minus I have is rhetoric. And I can probably take off the hobo cap hobo hat at the moment. Savo Fair is minus Yeah Yeah, I think uh I don't think we can do much about that. Okay, we're done here for now. Let's get out. Oh I didn't realize that's that's where the where it, where it led. Okay then. Good to know. Alright, Measure, you're coming with me. Your race descent has only worsened since I last saw you. You have really let yourself go. Hey, measure head, you gotta work with me now. Edvard told you to get us... Edvard told you to help us get that body down from the tree. So it was. You surmounted the harbor wall in a display of athletic prowess to reach my superior. Then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning and I will remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. Be careful with that body. You're so noble, Measure Head. There's a pot. But while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. Both of you. Lieutenant, what if we don't want to do that? Okay then, wait here while Measure Head goes. No way, we're not going to do that. Uh, Lieutenant, what if we don't want to do that? This is the uncomfortable result of not taking it down ourselves. I can live with a compromise. Listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. His mysterious race may yet prove fierce competition to my heroic haplogroup. Uh, let's see... How are you sure that this guy's not gonna mess up the corpse? I mean, we already messed it up, but we don't want to mess up it even further. Can, like, one of us... ...supervise this guy? No way we're not gonna do that? Fine. Goodbye. Return to your degeneracy. Okay, I'll wait here. Just take the body down. Oh, we we don't have a choice. We both have to be here. <sighs> okay, let's go. Babe, see that they stay here the whole time. Don't mess up the corpse too much. Well, at least we got this done before bedtime, I think. Let's just hope that everything else goes well. The woman's gaze follows Measurehead as he leaves. So, you guys are like cops or something? Why are you with Measurehead? Yeah, with the law around here. Apparently so. We're just trying to keep things from going to shit. Why are you, uh, why are you going with... Why are you with Measurehead? Look at him. His craniometric perfection. Are you cops or what? Uh, we're just trying to keep things from going to shit. Have you ever thought that maybe things should go to shit? I'm Katya, by the way. 
Hello, Katja. Nice for you to introduce yourself. You hear that? That sound. He's breaking something. Yeah, I'm not liking it. Yeah, Jean-Luc must be really tearing it up over there. I wish I could see it. I also wish I could see it, but not for your reasons. I don't. I've seen enough of that dead body already. Look at you! RCM Rent-A-Cops! Guarding that bridge like Evrod's lapdogs! Is this where it's at now? The RCM is for sale! And who are you? What is your business here? Why are your clothes four sizes too small for you? <laughs> the lieutenant fires back. I'll work with whoever I want. Yes, I am un an unbelievably corrupt cut. I'm corrupt every... I am corrupt every op opportunity I get. That's none of your business. And who are you? Ah, jeez. I'll work with whoever I want. A shrill laughter interrupts you, echoing across Martinez. It's Kuno. Then. Oh. Is Measurehead gonna beat Kuno up? The man turns to look behind him at the behemoth appearing around the corner, approaching him, walking past him. Well, he's back. What did he do? Well, the body's the down now. The has been removed from the tree. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory today. He brushes wooden flakes off his hand. There has been no side choosing. We did what we had to do to keep order. Thank you for your cooperation, Measure Hand. There has been no side choosing. And what you had to do <laughs> was to become a Union man for all to see. All right, we're gonna leave now. What's this? Jamais vu derealization. Jamais vu, the opposite of déjà vu. Oh. Not already seen, but never seen. Isn't that like a lot of Everything stuff? Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood. Only now. That's the feeling you've been having, and. For who knows how long. You should go and ask Choice Messier about this. What world are we in? This is a fundamental question. Okay. I feel like that's a lot of things, though. Plus one EXP for every orb clicked. Uh, all intellect learning caps raised by one. Okay. The body is down. Okay, Measurehead, you hopefully have not mess anything too badly. I'm just gonna have to book it. I don't know which one. Nope, I guess it's the fastest way. Yeah, this is the fastest way. Seven forty-seven. It's night. It's dark. Kudo's still alive. Good, thank goodness. What did he do? Uh, looks like he broke down the... Looks like he broke down the branch. Let's check the body. The corpse lies on the ground among the remains of an absolutely demolished pinewood branch. It's gently laid on one side. Beautiful. Wipe a tear from your eye. Well, it's down. Celebrate in a more reserved manner. Mr. Measurehead has done a good job. Nothing is too broken or compromised. The victim is ready for a field autopsy. A field autopsy? Yes. One, investigation of the scene. Two, initial examination of the victim. Three, field autopsy. Four, transportation of the body to the morgue. We are on number three. Okay, so we're almost at transportation. What's this? Done. Get the body down. Okay. We have skill points. How many skill points do we have? I th two. We have two skill points. 
Yeah, save those for when we need them. The RCM's four-phase murder scene processing manual. The fuck are they on about? Cop's gonna cut his shit up! You know, you're not half wrong. You're actually smarter than this other kid. Uh, don't we have someone else for this, Doctor? Why don't we have someone else to cut this shit open? Got it. Uh, why don't we have someone else for this? A doctor? No, you and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies our ability to handle the entire incident chain. From autopsy to clean up, to social work, everything. Wait, honor rank of detective? An honor and a burden attached to your rank once you've proven yourself able. Usually after five to eight years of field work. Mine is lieutenant detective. Yes, I feel like a detective. Okay. You are. Your station would not have assigned you on this case if you weren't. Now... The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. First, what exactly is a field autopsy? S tell me something, dead man. Try to remove the dead man's boots. Tell me something, dead man. Shoot, loony Rony. Okay, we've done this before. Come back later, Corpo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also see me in your dreams. What exactly is a field autopsy? Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. What you do know is, at 18.9 kilometers, the dormant shield volcano, Corpus Windy, is the world's highest summit, and the failure of the 38th single, Epuis de Saint, to crack the top 20, was the death knell of disco. But what a field autopsy is, <laughs> you have no idea. Okay, so that was just random trivia. Why don't you know? What use are you? I have gloves. I have gloves. Why don't you know? What use are you? You must have me confused with the Copperpedia. Who is the Copperpedia? I think I need to talk to him. You, sir. You are the Copperpedia. Do you have another pair of gloves? Unfortunately, no. Okay, I'll take it like a man. I need a pair then. Can we return to this shortly? I have glove hunting to do. Okay, I'll take it like a man. And hygienically? I need a pair then. Can we turn to this shortly? Let's not go glove hunting, please. Let's use division of labor. I perform the anatomical side while you take notes. We just fill this in, right? Show him the red field autopsy form in your ledger. That's right. All right, open your ledger at the field autopsy. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... Assistant, let's jump ahead to a three-part summary. Let's pause this autopsy. Uh, assistant. That's you. Let's see... Harry Dubois, HBD. I guess we write HBD. Harry Dubois. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings, just lies there. The next box says... Coroner's case number... KK57-0803. Kim Kitsuragi, a precinct 57, and then something, something, something. KK equals Kim Kitsuragi. Okay. 57 equals precinct 57 followed by his date, 0803, and time of arrival, 0815, on the scene. He's indexed the case after himself, not you. That's because he doesn't want to bring up the messy question of your initials. Shouldn't we file the coroner's case under me? Technically, I arrived at the scene before you. Yeah, just write it down. Next. Name. N.A. Next. Date of birth. N.A. Age. Mm, roughly 50. The lieutenant corrects his glasses. Try 40. The damage is so extensive, it's better to err on the young side. 
Mm, I'm gonna write about 42. He nods. Race. Mondial. Mondial. Fair to olive skinned, from the Isola of Mwindi. This is as vague as it gets. You might as well say whitish. Write it down. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither Mondial nor anything other. Sex. Male. <laughs> fucky, fucky! Yeah, okay. I mean, that's the only thing you kids know, right? The little monster exclaims energetically. Male. <laughs> Pigs could have sex! Male. Nor does he look male, with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. Uh, date of death. We're still going with March 4th, 51. 451, 4351. What else? Nine. Body identified by is non applicable. 10. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57 0503. 0815 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. Evidence of treatment? None. At least not after the initial examination. What is treatment anyway? Interfering with the body's position or wounds post mortem. Okay. Just making sure. I agree, lividity pointed to a lynching. Agree, no, uh, treatment. Let's see. Interfering with the body's position or wounds post-mortem. Not so sure what's next. No opinion. Okay, agreed, no treatment. A silent nod. The lieutenant places his gloved hand on the corpse's chest, as if in preparation. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform. Then, somewhere in Jamrock North, a small wood shed behind Rosencrantz Row, Lieutenant Nick Feuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse, no larger than a monkey. It's raining outside, light drizzle. There is darkness in the shed. Who's Nick Feuerbach? Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker chair, her silhouette ball-like against the window. Outside, Grand Coudon. The day is turning dim for Sergeant Mac Dawson. Hand extended, he approaches, to make sure she is dead more than anything else. Oh, is Nick the other guy? The, the redhead guy? I see. The building is tall, seven stories wind-wrapped in solitude. Most of the apartments are unoccupied. This was a suicide, the other, an accident, the small one. And so, all across Jamrock, Coal City, G-R-I-H, 42 deceased persons found today, 42 stations of breath. We should start the post-mortem. Turn the page. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy of paper tries to answer why. External examination summary, internal examination summary, description of injury summary. Tell me something, dead man. Try to remove the dead man's boots. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, external examination summary. Clothes. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's see. He turns the body onto its side to check the underwear lab label. Oh, see, it's happening. Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something more lurid. Write it down. The boots are ceramic, vitreous enamel. They are fused to his skin from blood flowing downward post-mortem. Removal of the boots is left for processing. It would be clever of you to omit the boots altogether, sire. If you are to keep them for yourself, as you ought to, you have deserved them more than anyone else. When am I gonna get them? Patience. After the autopsy, before the body is taken away, there will be a window of opportunity. 
after the lieutenant has gone to sleep. I hope this has helped you, my liege. Eh, write it down. The boat has a serial number. It's E15. We already reported it. We may as well know it. Dot one triple O. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alpha numerical. The number is purposefully concealed by the design. Write it down. Tattoos. He stands up, feet planted on either side of the body. The upper torso is covered in a single, continuous tattoo, resembling a map of the night sky. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings, to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene, using a triggered mini. Write it down. The deceit has a belt for airlifting cargo around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, three meters. There is a buckle on the other end. Write it down. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters. Generally consistent with age 42. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature, below freezing. Write it down. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with the age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. Touch the corpse here before moving on. Write it down. Short, light brown, male pattern baldness. I'm not gonna touch the corpse. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs. Consistent with stones thrown post mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity? You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was fucking max! Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. Yeah. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest, consistent with predation. Write down, but amend uh, for high velocity. Write down. Ligature mark. Ligature mark. The lieutenant produces a small folding knife. With the other hand pulling on the belt, he starts cutting into the polyester. The stench is horrid. After a while, it's obvious the material cannot be cut. The steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. You've got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. Oh yeah, I'm prepared. Pet the chain cutters. Good thing we got these chain cutters. Pull out the rubber grit cutters. Oh yeah, I'm prepared. The hanged man lets out a joyous little bubble of rot from his nose. Good thing we got these chain cutters. Always good to think ahead. Now... He points to the rope squeezing the dead man's neck. We need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully, with as much precision as you can. See, my pig is gonna fuck his head off. No, he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. Yes, Kuno. Yes, I'm Kuno's pig, I agree. I'm not your pig, Kuno. Look for a good spot to cut. Physical instrumentation, cut the belt off. Look for a good spot to cut. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread, rising from the yeast. Let's see. What's this? Field autopsy. Find some gloves option. Well, we're not. Well, 58% uh, red check. Is it because we don't have it equipped? We do have it. I wish I can, like, um, re-equip it or something. All right, let's go ahead. After some deliberation, you sink the cutters Thankfully. into the knot tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together, sweat forming on your brow. Press down. Snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. The rope rises to a point leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. The lieutenant has uh, kneeled closer, running his finger along the dark red groove until there's a gap. As it ought to. This is where its grip on the curdled meat is gentlest, pulling up. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Right down. Chest is intact. Normal contour. Abdomen is protuberant. Pelvis intact. Genitalia. He pulls down the man's underpants. <laughs> no! 
Let's get out of it, see. I fucking knew it. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. Write it down and move on. Back is symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. From wounds sustained over two, maybe more decades, dispersal and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty. The scarring is extensive, way more than a law officials. Mm -hmm. We have a real museum here. Of battles, wars. Write it down. Last item. Hands. Uh, he takes the man's right hand in his, inspects it, then moves on to the other hand. Pick up the hand. Let the lieutenant work alone. Yeah, we, we, we are ungloved, we don't want to touch it. Hands are clean. No sign of a recent struggle. Were we expecting any? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Write it down. Ooh. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? Uh, internal examination summary. Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course, there is a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to this story. If I may add, the moral of this story... Nope. <laughs> uh, there's no moral to the story. I don't know, I kind of want to do it, just for the heck of it, but we are, we're doing a, we're doing an investigation here. We gotta be professional. Nope, right in A. Musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hyoid bone. Let's see. He gets close to the swollen mouth hole, eyes squinting from the fumes. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it. Gently, a rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. Yeah, jack that fucker off! The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Write it down. Respiratory system. Uh, back hunched as if in prayer. He begins to pry open the dead man's jaw. He stops to exert more force. Both hands are used. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen. Hemorrhaging present in mucosa of the lips and mouth. Look inside the dead man's mouth. No scream. No sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again. Straight in that mouth of his. Mm, look deeper? Oh, okay. Bad idea. It's hard. Once more, you taste stomach acid in the back of your throat. A contraction. Your throat pumps a little something from your stomach and into your mouth. You're forced to swallow, just to keep looking. Inside, you see darkness. Just a mess of meat and darkness. Hemorrhaging present in mucus. The lieutenant repeats impatiently. He lets go of the jaws. The mouth uh, shuts. Snaps shut before you. We just write it down. Hepatobiliary. N.A. N.A. Don't we have anything? Ah. Are you a hepatobiliary expert? He looks at the corpse's stomach with a mixture of tiredness and disgust. Just write N.A. Same for toxicology and serology. N.A. Uh, yeah, we don't have anything about that, so N.A. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Write it down. Gastrointestinal. He breathes with a sigh of, uh, of approaching relief. This is the last field on the list. He looks around to the ground, the pool of feces there. This will do. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. He touches the corpse's bloated lower abdomen briefly. Right down amid the voila. Eat the voila. <laughs> amid the voila. What's next on the list? Description of injuries summary. Let's see. We have 
bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one too. Uh, what about the injuries we have inflicted? Oh, so we inflicted them? Okay, I inflicted them. Okay, so there's a spin stabilized munition from a Kiel A990 muzzleloader lodged in his lung. I don't think we should mention that. Better not to muddy the waters. I agree, the waters are muddy enough. Okay. So, okay, so back to injuries. Injuries. Bite marks. Head, chest, and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. Okay. And your opinion, officer? Uh, opinion, fatal injury, non-fatal post-mortem. Let's see... Non-fatal post-mortem. Agreed. Next injury? Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury. A stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. <laughs> Velocity, fucko! Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Write it down. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury, two boxes. Non fatal post mortem. Right. Next. Ligature mark, finish the autopsy. What's the fourth field for? Nothing. Just in case. Okay, ligature mark. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck, with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, 7 centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical colon intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, 1 centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Write it down. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Opinion, fatal injury. That's it. We have established cause of death. It's not much, and it leaves much to be questioned. But it's a start. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. Okay, first, how did it go? Well, we established probable cause of death. Some would say that's the goal of an autopsy. What else? We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. I agree. Oh yeah, well done, Master Detective. Maybe a drink is in order? Perhaps a drink is in order, later I mean. Now, you see, that worries me. You will die if you drink. You know that, don't you? You are proving a useful detective. The organization would miss you. Okay, what now? I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Faubourg. Okay, rip out a copy of the autopsy pages. For processing. He looks at the dead man one more time, then at the slip of red paper in his hand, then at the corpse again. You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Hmm. 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 I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. Let's see. Perception. Legendary. Perception. Perception, where is perception? Ah, right here. What if I max this out? Probably not needed, but we let's try let's give it a go. Um that, that's a lot of points to put in here. I'm just revert, let's revert this for now. Uh is this a white check? It is a white check. Perception, 3%. Let's, uh, let's put one point. Eight percent. A little bit more? Seventeen percent. Okay, so... It's not helping much. Let's save our other point for something else. But let's give it a shot. I don't think there's going to be anything bad that happens. So let's just give it a shot. Your arms oh! reach out and your eyes close, as if by their own volition. 
It's dark all around. You feel cold, slippery flesh, first with your fingertips, then under the palm of your hand. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. I'm getting some good rolls. Minus against uh, measure head, but you know, we did what, what we did what we could. What is this? That's why you're a super cop. His face, his cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a spider, your hand crawls over his features. Everything is silent. Curl up his nostrils. They are swollen shut. You need to really push to get in. Touch something else. You're not far. It'll come to you. Keep crawling. Put your fingers in his mouth. And it froze. Why? The oral cavity okay. is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. Play with it, this feels right. Open your eyes and look. No touch something else. You're not far. It'll come to you. Keep crawling. Squeeze his nose. You pick it between your fingers. The mess feels large, very porous somehow. Keep crawling, lest you break it. I can't escape, I gotta do something. They are swollen shut. You need to really push to get in. I guess we gotta push. Only the little one fits. The flesh changes shape as you bore in, searching for something in the cartilage. The fuck is he doing? You hear a voice squeak. It sounds very far away. The thing you're looking for, it's not here either. Crawl out, spider. Put your finger in his mouth. Why does this part take so long? There's something going on with the... The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. Let's try. Open your eyes and look. A vision of black and dark red death, pried open by your naked hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from the throat, and there, in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate. You see a hole, barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut, almost vanished. No larger than 0.4 centimeters in radius, the edges appear darkened. What is this? An abrasion collar. This is what we're after. Abrasion collar. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Keep going. Kuno nods too. He takes a step closer. Touch it with your finger gently. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound. Put your finger in. Your index fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up. Tissue damage. Wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his mouth, right into his brain stem. Why? The fuck is happening? That's why I want to know. We got the same brain right now. Ah, oh, shit, see? Feel around first. The basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. This man will never sleep again. Never wake. Push deeper. Your fingers slide into the remains of his limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. There's a cavity cut right between the hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Fucking cavity, see? Kuno's voice is hush. Push deeper. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further, but the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. All the muscles in your body harden. Time to enter him. Punch a hole through his mouth. Wriggle in. That's wriggle. I don't want to punch through it. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper until you feel it on the tip of your finger. Sharp serrated material. The edges cut right into your skin. 
Let's see. I feel a solid object right under the skull. Can you... can you get to it? Inspect the skull first. There's a tiny crack. A protrusion in the cranium. Right in the back of his head. Your finger must be pointing straight at it. From the inside. The object that is in there stops just short of the skull in the encephalus, knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. We have the makings of a uh, very small exit wound here. The lieutenant leans closer. Wait, so he was shot? Forget about the fucking exit wound, Bino! The pig is wearing him like a fuck puppet! Fish it out. You pick the object between your index and middle finger. It feels sharp, like metal. With your face twisting from pain and concentration, all you need to do is just... I got it. <laughs> My pig's fucking got it? What? What is it? Slowly pull your fingers out. The inside of the head feels cold and smooth, like a glove. Sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth, covered in blood up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower, a blossom made of lead. It was a, it was a, uh, what do you call this? A bullet. Fucking beautiful! A bullet. Yep. So he didn't die from being hanged. He got, sh he was shot. I'm not sure which happened first. Either he got shot and then hanged, or hanged and then shot. But he got shot either way. Drop it in. Put it in the evidence bag. The bullet falls in the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, A non-calibre. Rifle. Some kind of brittle alloy. Fractured on impact. Keep it, Lieutenant. That's a gift. No, no, you deserve it. We can log it later. Let's see. The lieutenant drops the body, the bag in your bloody hand. It feels light. We need to add an item to the injury list. Injury number four. <laughs> Oval entry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft palate, back of mouth. High velocity. Temporary cavity in brain tissue. Small exit wound on the occiput. How does that sound? Sounds about right. Sounds like heaven. Opinion, fatal injury. God damn right. Agreed. Wasn't that what we thought the last time? Clean your hand of the handkerchief. God damn right. And one last thing. We should amend injury number three. Ligament mark. New opinion, non-fatal. Post-mortem. Treatment. He's proposing the bullet was the real cause of death and the hanging and attempt to conceal this fact. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing too. Uh, treatment. Uh, ligament mark, the fractured high bone, it was all treatment. Yeah. Yes, and the belt around his neck, the hanging, even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was already dead. Agreed. Aren't we jumping to conclusions? Mm. Yeah, I agree. I don't think we're jumping to conclusions, I do agree. I have had my doubts for a while now. Since I saw there were no signs of struggle on his hands, and no claw marks on his neck. That adds up? There have been other signs too. Small details. Everything is too neatly designed for us to assign probable cause here, as we did, full-heartedly. Well, no more. There is of course, the very real possibility he was both shot and hanged. That is real, but um, if, if he got hanged before he got shot, there would be signs of struggle. There was no signs of struggle. So I guess he got shot and then hanged. That's the only thing that can make sense right now. Maybe they just shot him while they hanged him? No. Who would do this? Why would anyone do this? I think I need to wash myself. Maybe the bullet holds more answers. Uh, who would do this? That's a good question. That's for us to find out. But this, it will make finding them just a little easier. Let's see. I think I need to wash myself. Oh, you really, really do. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that. 
Your room in the Whirling in Rags should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it. Yeah, evening. but I don't have money for tonight. Maybe the bullet holds more answers. Yes, we should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. Uh, let's see. What happens next? We put him in a bag and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. The body bag should contain the odor for the duration of the transport. I would drive him to processing, but it's too late to do that today. Yeah, it's nice. I'll do it first thing tomorrow. No problem. One more thing. This was really good work, detective. Thank you, Kim. I tried to be professional during this examination. And not remove the boots. Uh, let's drag him to, to the kinema. You're finished with the corpse. All right. We got a lot of experience points for this. Wow. We're getting like points after points. Sounds like good progress. There go those beautiful enamel boots. May they rest in processing. Ah, <sighs> it's not like we can sell them that easily anyway. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands, I'll take the legs. Okay, bag the corpse and drag it to the motor carriage. <sighs> I'm gonna have to ask someone for money, don't I? Well, I think this is a good place to stop for today. Um, so, yeah, let's stop here for today. I was going to go and get some money from someone who might be able to help us, but I guess that's not a, something we can do right now. We'll do that next time. I hope we can sneak into our room because we really need to do that. Otherwise, we're going to be sleeping on the bench for tonight. And that's not good for me, that's for sure. Not that the room is any better, but it's it's safer at least. Uh, but yeah, let's review really quick. Wow, that's actually quite the progress today. We finally, finally got the body down. We just had to like uh, sneak into the backyard and get to Everhart. And Measurehead was actually helpful, even though he still kept on spouting his ideology everywhere. And the autopsy, I actually quite enjoyed the autopsy a lot. You don't see a whole lot, but the descriptions are quite enough. Quite enough. And I enjoyed that quite a bit. So yeah, uh, we'll continue this again next time. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I really want to see where we go from here. Hopefully next time I'll have some money to go back up into the room or maybe sneak in. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I hope you enjoyed that, Nuggets. See you in the next video or stream. Until next time, later. Goodbye.